Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherall and I am a fourth generation witch. As a fourth generation witch, I'm often asked what deities I worship and in answer to that, none, I don't worship. However, I understand and realise the potential that there is in invoking the spirit of a deity. And so for today's video, I wanted us to look at seeking Hecate. So who was Hecate? Was she an Egyptian goddess? Was she an Anatolian goddess? Was she Greek? Hmm. Well, in answer to that, we don't actually know. Possibly she came, the name came, from Heca, the Egyptian goddess, the frog-headed goddess of childbirth, with which Hecate is associated. There were many shrines and temples laid out to her, including shrines within the own home. We just don't know where she comes from. However, there is one thing that is very definitive about Hecate and all her guises, and that is she is associated as the goddess of witchcraft and magic. The Greeks had her as a triple goddess, so three faces looking in different directions, and hence she was placed at shrines on crossroads. Crossroads were dangerous places from as far back as we can remember, until about the 1800s, certainly. And so Hecate was used as a goddess of the crossroads, which she protected and helped travellers passing through. This in turn was taken to mean that she was also considered a goddess of doorways. And so you often see ancient depictions of Hecate holding two lighted flames in either hand. And this is to show she is lighting the way through the darkened doorways. The Greeks had Hecate closely associated with dogs, amongst other animals, but mostly dogs. And they were always female. Female dogs were always having puppies in the old days. And so they used to sacrifice the female dog and her puppies to Hecate at crossroads. Should you hear the howling of hounds, this presages her entrance. Meaning, should you hear dogs howling, it possibly means that Hecate is coming. Dogs were also guardians of doorways and entranceways. For example, Cerberus, the three-headed dog who guarded the entranceway to Hades, both from keeping living people going in and the ghosts coming out. I think Hecate became associated with ghosts and spirits through the dog association. She became a psychopomp, which means she's a guardian for those spirits who are heading on their final journey from earth to heaven or hell and back again, depending on which way they're going, obviously. Her own dog was known as Hecuba. It's a rather lovely name, isn't it? I love the name Hecuba. Don't know why, it just pleases me. Part of a Hecate's iconography, i.e. things associated with her, was that she was goddess of plant law, both medicinally and poisons, and particular plants that were associated with her were belladonna, dittany, aconite or monkshood, and mandrake, all of which are highly poisonous and also have an effect on your psychic self. You know, they can open your third eyes whilst killing you at the same time. So, yeah, in the 1700s, the ladies used to put belladonna in their eyes to make the pupils expand and become huge and dark and actually sent them completely high as a kite, which I think is why they did it, actually, because it couldn't have been pleasant putting these things in their eyes. But I think the after effects were... Hecate has been worshipped for over 7,000 years and she has always been associated with magic and sorcery. This in the changing of the plants and the poisons that she created and this sorcery and magic became known as witchcraft and it has a particularly female aspect to it. Hecate being the head of the female witches. 
She was hugely popular throughout ancient Greece and they used to have a lunar meal for her. And this could either be an offering at her shrine or the family would gather together and use the meal in honour of Hecate. This happened on a new moon or when you see the first crescent of a new moon after that date. Every month they would sit down and worship Hecate with some moon covered foods in a meal. Which is a still a completely charming way to worship Hecate. She is the goddess of the moon and is worshipped as such. She was well established in British folklore by the time of Shakespeare. He has Hecate being the goddess witch over the weird sisters, the three witches of Hubble, Bubble, Doyle and Trouble fame, who I always rather liked. I thought they were the best bit about Macbeth myself, because quite frankly, I never really did Shakespeare. I'm quite, I'm quite keen on my literature, but Shakespeare, not for me, I'm afraid. Although Hecate has dominion over the plants and their poisons, she is a kind and tender-hearted goddess. As shown by her accompanying those spirits from the place of the living to the place of the dead where they finally rested. In Greek mythology, she used to accompany the goddess Demeter from Hades into the spring the sunshine and then back again in the autumn when winter took hold. She was very kind-hearted, yet implacable, filled with mercy, yet ruthless. So you have to be careful when invoking Hecate in your magic about what you're invoking her for. Her neo-pagan or Wiccan roots are as an association of the crone or the third phase of the moon. So she's an older witch, hence why they say that sometimes younger witches like to associate with Hecate. They depict her as a sexy woman, but in fact she's not. She is certainly the old crone film at it is the ancient Greek goddess Hecate who was this beautiful, womanly form. She really came to prominence with the Blackburn cult in Los Angeles in the 1920s. This was a cult headed up by Mary Blackburn and she used Hecate as her goddess of worship. So the queens of the cult were buried with seven dogs and they would sacrifice many dogs to Hecate in their rituals. A bit grim, isn't it? I think the cult fell down after Mary was done for grand larceny, but you know, it, at the time it was a big deal. So how would you ask Hecate to help you in your magic? Well, she helps primarily with those things that she is associated with. So her animals are serpents, polecats, boars, dogs and mares, female horses. And so if you wish to work magic with any of these animals, it is a great thing to invoke Hecate to help you with that. Raise the serpent in the spring, for example, which Hecate would be most useful to do so with. Hecate is great for invoking for protection, so warding your property. If you wanted extra help with this, I would use Hecate and quite frankly, extra help for boarding your home is always a good thing, in my opinion. However, be warned, if you are going to invoke the goddess Hecate and seek her out, make sure that the magic is just and true. Because although Hecate is merciful, she is also ruthless. And you will reap what you sow when you invoke her. So if you're going to send out a curse, the rebound from that curse, if you use Hecate, will come straight back at you. So be very careful about how you invoke her. And so whatever purpose you would like to have in mind, I would recommend doing an altar to Hecate. You could do an altar, for example, to help you with childbirth. She is the goddess of that after all. To help you with your dogs or horses, or snakes to help you when creating your potions. I have to say, I do like a bit of potion work. And finally, I'd use her in spirit work. If you want to commune with those souls that have passed over or under, then use Hecate to channel your spirit medium. Do tell me about how you invoke Hecate and what would you invoke her for? Is she one of your main goddesses and do you have an altar to her? Let me know in the comments below. 
Otherwise, don't forget to check me out on Patreon. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall for more information. There's plenty up there for all to look at, including my coven meeting. Come and join us. It's great fun. Otherwise, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps my channel and I really need people to like and subscribe for me. And I will see you in a few days. Thank you.